All right, how about we start things off with the old omelet trick, a prank that was pretty dang popular back in the 1890s. Like all sorts of newspapers were writing about it. So let me explain how the prank worked with the aid of this article that I found in an old issue of the Kansas City Press from 1899. In this article, a reporter recounts the tale of a dinner that they had attended down in Atlanta, Georgia. Apparently, throughout the dinner, a cigar salesman sitting at the reporter's table had been dazzling everyone with a variety of magic tricks and illusions, and, and now, as the dinner was winding down and the evening was coming to a close, the salesman wanted to cap things off with one last big trick. So the salesman, he picks a wealthy and pompous looking merchant out of the group and asks the guy if he has ever seen an omelet cooked inside of a hat. The merchant, he kind of thinks about it for a second and then he says, no, I don't think I've ever seen that. So immediately the salesman's eyes, they light up and he says, all right then, how about a friendly wager? I will bet you a couple of free cigars that I can cook an omelet in your fine silk hat without damaging it one bit. The merchant shrugs his shoulders and he says, all right, I know for sure there's gonna be some kind of weird trick involved here, but I'm willing to lose the bet if it means that I get to see how you're possibly going to cook an omelet in my hat without damaging it. And he takes off his hat and he hands it over. <laughs> now, the reporter has actually seen the old omelet trick before and he knows what's coming. So he just starts kind of giggling to himself as he watches the salesman take the hat from the merchant. The salesman, as soon as he gets the hat, he sends a waiter to go grab some eggs from the kitchen and before you know it, he's standing over a little gas stove, cracking eggs right into the merchant's hat. He's stirring the eggs all around, he's making a gigantic mess and the newspaper was actually kind enough to include for us a little drawing of the scene. Yeah, there's the cigar salesman cooking up an omelet in the hat, a whole big crowd watching, absolutely amazed. Now, after a little while, the hat is just disgusting. Like the eggs aren't cooking at all. They're getting all over the inside of the hat and eventually the fire even burns a hole in the bottom, causing all the eggs to come leaking out onto the floor. So the cigar salesman, he sees this and he just kind of looks at the hat and then looks at the eggs and then he hands the now completely destroyed hat back to the merchant and says, dang, I guess I owe you a couple of cigars. Later, the reporter would actually find the merchant in the hotel lobby, and he asks him, uh, what did you think of that wager? Well, the merchant said, I guess I won the cigars, but I really don't feel too good about it. <laughs> Prank number two comes to us from the St. Joseph Gazette back in 1898. This one, again, revolves around a gentleman's wager. A construction worker named Bronson had been badgering a co-worker named Dugan for hours about making a bet. Bronson wanted to wager $2 that he could run 200 yards faster than Dugan could run 25 yards. The catch being that Bronson would give Dugan a pint of water that he would have to drink as he ran the 25 yards. So after a little convincing, Dugan finally agree. You know, he's just thinking that uh, this is going to be some easy money, right? Like how hard could it be to drink a glass of water while running? Well, surprisingly, pretty hard when you consider that the pint of water that Bronson gave to Dugan was actively boiling. <laughs> yeah, that was the prank. Bronson tricks you into agreeing to drink a cup of water that he gives you specifically, and then the water that he gives you is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so, of course, as you might expect, as soon as Dugan figured out that winning the bet would be pretty much impossible, he promptly drank the entire glass of boiling water, scalded himself so bad that he later had to go to the hospital, ran down that 25 yards like nobody's business, and won the two bucks. Yeah, he still drank the boiling water and still won the race. Like, don't you ever even think about trying to pull a bogus wager on William goddamn Dugan. He's gonna find a way to win whether you like it or not. 
Okay, I wanted to include this next article mostly because it just feels like it was written in like an alternate universe or something like that. Like the verbiage they use just makes no sense at all for the subject matter. So this is from a Dallas, Texas newspaper back in 1937. And the headline basically claims that a guy shot up the town, got in a duel with the sheriff, and then claimed the entire thing was a prank, so they let him go free. <laughs> so, as best as I can tell, the whole thing started when a blacksmith named Wit Thomas knocked out another man in a bar that he had been arguing with. So, the cops were called, and as soon as they showed up, Thomas just started blasting at them with a revolver. He was shooting a whole bunch of holes all over the saloon for over an hour. And the cops, they start firing back uh, with the sheriff in particular, shooting at him with a sawed off shotgun, eventually even hitting him square in the shoulder. And after some time, the cops managed to capture and arrest the guy and take him to jail before promptly releasing him with no charges because he said that the whole thing was a prank. But to be honest, the story itself isn't even really the, the weird part here. The weird part is the language that the article uses to describe the whole event. Like they're just completely bought in on the idea that this was just a prank. Like none of this is how I would ever talk about a shootout with the police. Like, like just look at this one passage, for example. Even Sheriff Haverball exchanged friendly shot. <laughs> friendly sawed off shotgun and pistol shots with Thomas, who was inclined to enter into the spirit of the thing. <laughs> friendly sawed off shotgun blasts. Like they're talking about shooting at somebody with a shotgun like it's a handshake. Or how about this one? The sheriff shot at him twice with a sawed off shotgun but he didn't mean to hit him because he knew Thomas was just kidding and wasn't really aiming at him with the revolver. Somehow Thomas got shot in the shoulder. <laughs> so these two guys are just standing in front of each other in the bar with real guns, really shooting like, I guess, around each other without trying to hit each other, all as part of like some weird unspoken charade of a police shootout that they just spontaneously decided to do. Except for the sheriff apparently messed up and accidentally actually shot the guy in the shoulder. <laughs> I don't know, like th this is just such a weird one to me. Like my, my best guess is maybe the cops didn't want to charge the guy for some reason, some kind of shady reason, and this is the best like fake cover-up story that they could come up with. Here is a real crazy one that happened in St. Louis back in 1898. Apparently, some medical students from a nearby college were looking out their window late at night when they saw a couple of drunk guys walking home from the bar. Somehow, the students got the idea in their heads that it would be a great prank to basically kidnap the guys and then pretend like they were gonna perform some like horrible, grotesque surgery on them. So they go out into the street, they literally grab the guys, kicking and screaming, like drag them into the house, throw them on an operating table and start like waving around a whole bunch of surgical instruments going like, ooh, we're gonna cut you up, ooh. One of the students even took things so far that he started forcibly giving the guys chloroform to freak them out even more. So these guys, they're laying on the table and at this point they're just going absolutely crazy. You know, they're drunk as hell. They're getting drugged by a bunch of random strangers and people are waving knives around in their faces. So they are just screaming and yelling and eventually all the commotion attracts the attention of a cop who rushes in and tells the kids that they gotta let these people go. So the drunk guys, as soon as they're released, they immediately jump off off the table and run outside. And one of the guys is just completely delusional from the chloroform. And he starts thinking that everybody he sees on the street is out to get him and he whips out a knife and he gets into a scuffle with a whole bunch of people. And eventually he ends up stabbing the other drunk guy. And then he just passes out from the chloroform right there in the road. <laughs> as of the writing of this article, both guys were in critical condition at the hospital. Like, isn't it just crazy to think that multiple people 
actually thought that doing this to some random strangers would be a good idea. And now I want to close this video out with a bit more of a good natured prank, <laughs> at least kind. Of. I found this one in an Oregon newspaper. Back in 1952, a young couple announced that they were going to get married. So as a sort of engagement celebration prank, their friends tied up the boy to a tree and then gave 200 different keys to the girl, telling her that only one will unlock the chains. <laughs> so there she is, just trying all the keys. Show this to your partner and ask them if they would go through all 200 keys to unlock you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.